felt, right? Uh, you know, if you go out at one Tesla, it's already uh, almost as large as the zero field conductance. But then if you go to two Tesla, it's already five or six times larger. It's going up quadratically at a very rapid rate. And this, is, this itself is odd, right? Because I want to repeat the point. Because if you took a single band uh, semi-metal or semiconductor, um, you should not see any of this at all, right? You, the, the conductance should be just uh, completely flat. Uh, the right panel shows a new feature, which is, again, a surprise. That if you push it too hard, go to high fields, then you see some evidence of a knee, right, this upturn, which we think is the opening of the gap. The electronic system is undergoing a phase transition, uh, perhaps forming a spin density wave or charge density wave. We don't know. But it's some kind of a transition that opens a gap. The resistivity shoots up very rapidly. But uh, at, the, at the alignment, uh, at zero degrees, it seems to be immune from that. It doesn't see that. So this is a uh, phenomenon of the component of the field along the z-axis. Uh, that, that's for future work to explore. Yeah. You say the value in the, the parallel? Come again? You say the value in the different parallel? No, in the value, what I meant was that between one node. Right, but... Not, not, not the drop. Not the drop. Right. Okay, so... Does it matter that the two are not together? Yeah, that's the point I'm going to talk about. So the point brought up by Aris is the following. Uh, how far apart do the wild nodes? Remember, we are always focus on one direct node, right? Forget about the other one. So uh, how far do the two wild nodes have to be to see this effect? And, and this is something that is uh, actually uh, a difficult question. Uh, certainly can be answered by me. Uh, this is something that, that theorists will have to think about. Uh, so, if you all right, so before I, I mention that, so th this makes the point that the the uh, axial current relaxation is very large compared to the Druder. And what? So why is the axial current relaxation so slow? Right. And um, in the original Nielsen linear calculation, they they required the wild nodes to be very far apart. And therefore, if this were charge impurities screened by, say, a Thomas Fermi factor, uh, a large momentum scatter right, would diminish the matrix element. So that, that was their mechanism for seeing an enhanced curve. Um, we don't think this is going on. Uh, this is probably not it. Uh, a, a more interesting idea, which I'll discuss in the next slide, is that Maybe the chiral symmetry is what is stopping it, that this is really a good quantum number, weakly violated, but nonetheless, you know, it, it, it's still approximately a good symmetry, and that tends to suppress the backscatter. Yeah, so, so that's the point I made here. Okay, so this slide addresses the, uh, the question of how far apart. So the, the only way for a magnetic field, as far as I know, to, to split nodes is through the Zeeman coupling. And this is actually anticipated by the IOP paper uh, where they, uh, they introduced the Zeeman G factor by a second term, right? But now with different uh, G factors for the S band, and the P band. And it's important that the two be very different, otherwise you don't see anything. So uh, when the field is zero, the two wild nodes are sitting on top of each other. Uh, the way I've drawn it, this is the part of the S band, right? Remember, this was the parabola that went like that. And the P band was this uh, heavy hole that, that intersected across it. So with the magnetic field, they will move apart. And if they actually move apart in different directions, so that P minus 3 half is up, plus 3 half is down, and the other way for the S band, then you see that the intersection does move apart. Right? And from this, you can estimate how big a splitting uh, uh, results, and that's the formula. We can easily solve this. Um, but 
in order to get a split comparable to the Fermi wave vector, uh, you need about 12 Tesla if, if, if the G factor is about 40. So we don't have an idea what the G factor is. But in my mind, it seems uh, large that, that you need 12 Tesla, whereas we see the current, the, the enhanced current saturate. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't emphasize the point. Let me, let me step back a little bit. The, the enhanced current plotted here, right, this is the resistance. It drops and saturates around 6 Tesla. This is the field at which we enter the lowest Landau level. So once you get to the lowest Landau level, the uh, backscattering rate cancels the field dependence of the pump rate, and you get more or less a flat uh, conductance. But, but nonetheless, uh, that tells you that, you know, six Tesla, you're already seeing the maximum effect. So uh, it, it doesn't seem like a split of the wild nodes uh, alone can account for this uh, chiral current. An interesting possibility was recently proposed by Burkhoff. Uh, this is a difficult paper to read, but let me just sort of summarize the, uh, the <coughs> contents. So there, there are two uh, populations, right? NV stands for the vector uh, charge density. That means the ordinary uh, charge. And NA is the axial charge, which is the of interest. So the vector charge uh, obeys the usual diffusion equation with some cross uh, contamination from the axial charge. And gamma is this charge pumping rate. So the two populations in a magnetic field and electric field start to communicate. And that is the cross pumping rate. For the axial current, uh, you have this additional relaxation that, that uh, comes from the axial current relaxation time. So by complicated calculation, Birkhoff shows that uh, the ratio of the two times should actually be the Fermi energy over the bandwidth, over what I interpret as the bandwidth of this population. And that's a very small number. So this sort of justifies the very long relaxation time of the uh, axial current. And in, in his words, it's this near conservation of axial charge that, that, that uh, makes the relaxation very slow. So th this, I think, is possibly the, the central issue, right? How to understand relaxation of the axial current. Uh, yet another factor was pointed out to me by Boris Spivak, that you know, in, in purely scattering, right, which proceeds by this matrix element, may be, in fact, uh, sensitive to the relative chiralities of the two states. And, and this could be heavily suppressed. Uh, so therefore, the backscattering rate would be suppressed as well. So this is another interesting possibility. But the point, well, you know, I'm not going to answer the question now, but the point is now experiment can actually make contact with calculations in a rather direct way. Right? Since the measurements improve, and one can you know, uh, make all kinds of uh, uh, measurements that are predicted. So to sum up, uh, I feel that this, the, the, the signature of the chiral anomaly is this steerability, right? And the fact that the plume is so narrow. Um, so it's this locking of, of the field to the, uh, to the plume that I think uh, will, will, will really define this uh, enhanced current. Um, the observation the near observation of a negative longitudinal MR is, of course, necessary, but it's really insufficient. And, and the reason will become apparent in the next slide. I'll do a summary. Skip that. All right. So uh, we, we, we are, of course, not alone in, in exploring this new area of materials. Uh, in the past year, many groups have posted sightings, and this is an incomplete list. Some some have even been published. So there's the uh, original bismuth antimony compound. We, actually, this is an accidental band crossing. They, they have tuned the relative bismuth content so that they, they get gap closing at one critical uh, doping. And then they see uh, negative MR. Um, this, this is published quite, quite a number of years ago. We see this in cadmium arsenide. 
uh, in zirconium pentatel, right? There's also this uh, clay that you're seeing it. But this is, uh, this is not a uh, uh, wild system, uh, so it's not clear what's going on here. Uh, palladium cobalt oxide, also they, they, uh, this group claims to see negative MR. Uh, but this is not even a direct uh, material, it has a parabolic mass. Uh, and, and this group on the new families of wild semi metals by Zahid's group and by the IOP group. Uh, but all these materials, the, the enhanced current is actually quite small. If you look at the data, it's at most a 10% uh, change in the overall resistance. Unlike here, where you see a factor of 8 to 9 increase in the resistance. Uh, but we feel that, uh, okay, before I finish this, uh, uh, that there have been earlier reports. Oh, I forgot to bring the slide, sorry. Anyway, so as far back as in the early 70s, um, uh, cadmium, mercury cadmium telluride displayed negative longitudinal MR. So there are materials that show this phenomenon, and uh, one has to come up with you know, a more definitive signature. And uh, I would like to propose that uh, this signature is the steerability of the current flow. Ahead of time, right? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, okay, so let me, let me stop here and take the questions. Is it possible that the field just gaps up the wilds instead of splits it? Gaps up the wild. Then you shouldn't get any enhanced current. Oh, you mean at a very high field? At the Zeeman, then. Even at the Zeeman, just in the Zeeman field. But then, why would you get a current? Oh, no, I mean, like, okay. We, 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 which part are you talking about? Well, okay, so you had the fly where you split the wires. Oh. No, no, but if you so when you at uh, weak fields when it starts to move apart, if you get the wild notes, then you wouldn't see any, uh, any increase in current. Oh, okay, but that's your experiment. In principle, why can't you have to But the nodes are protected, right? The wild nodes are protected. Plus minus. I don't know. I didn't mean to discuss that. I'm not sure I understand the point. Yeah. Uh, in figure D, what is the uh, whole resistivity looks like when the uh, low XX spike up? Uh, it doesn't change very much. It doesn't change very much. Do you see the ACW or something like that? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think it does change. I, I didn't bring the whole code to me, but uh, I don't think it changes from that. If it is, it, if it is ACW, maybe some, some carrier is just struck, so the whole conductivity may be changed a lot. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the high field, um, High field phenomenon has to be we study more carefully. Um, yeah. Where we get time on the 45 Tesla Mac, I think that that's where we can answer these questions. No, the, 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 the theory is that the, uh, the, the wild dis displacement of the wild nodes uh, is parallel to the magnetic field. So the field determines the uh, split. Do you have to apply the field in a specific direction? Oh, no, no. Well, so this is what our experiment showed. So right. yeah, as you rotate the field, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And that's consistent? I wouldn't believe so. We, we believe that is the signature that the field itself is picking up a special direction 
even though the system is uh, nominally isotropic. So you mentioned very different G factors for the electron and hole band. No, for the uh, S band and the P band. Right. Yeah. And uh, what is known about the anisotropy G factors? Well, okay, so I've talked to the uh, IOP theorists who have this massive supercomputer that they can use to generate the uh, band structure. Uh, they, their calculation shows that the G factor is very anisotropic. Uh, I'm not sure which one, where this S of P, P that. It's largest in the field is parallel to the Z axis and actually quite small when it's in plane, which actually argues against the wild node splitting by a lot. The, 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 uh, Shitai told me that's actually a very difficult calculation, the anisotropy of the G factor. But in our experiment, we can't uh, determine. Okay, if there are no other questions, then let's thank the speaker.